The oceans of today, with their great white sharks, box jellyfish, and saltwater crocodiles, are practically a day at the beach compared to what lurked beneath the surface of the Devonian seas 419 million years ago. Known as the Age of Fish, this period saw Earth's waters, which covered an unprecedented 85% of the planet, transform into death traps designed by nature itself, inhabited by creatures that would make modern marine biologists wake up in terror. So, what made these ancient waters so terrifying? For one, the world's geography was unrecognizable. The supercontinent Gondwana dominated the Southern Hemisphere, while Euro-America stretched across the equator, creating vast, shallow seas that acted as nature's laboratories for some of the most efficient killing machines ever to roam the planet. These weren't just big fish. They were armored leviathans with bite forces powerful enough to crush bone, jaws functioning like industrial machinery, and hunting strategies so effective they remained unchanged for millions of years. And the most chilling part? You wouldn't even see most of them coming. If you somehow found yourself transported to the Devonian seas, your first instinct might be to stay in the shallows, perhaps finding comfort in being able to see the bottom. This would be your first fatal mistake. The Lekanathus, its name literally translating to pitted jaw, made the seafloor itself a death trap. This two meter or 6.6 .6 feet nightmare didn't need to chase you, it simply waited. With a flattened skull and body perfectly camouflaged, it lay motionless against the bottom, virtually indistinguishable from the surrounding sand and rocks. Its massive jaw muscles, anchored to thick bone plates, powered one of the strongest bite forces of any Devonian fish. With such a creature lurking, every step in the Devonian shallows carried the possibility that the ground beneath you wasn't ground at all, but a patient predator waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Imagine walking through shallow water, your feet just inches from what seems like an innocuous patch of seafloor. Then, in the blink of an eye, that seafloor morphs into a gaping maw lined with curved fangs, each designed to trap and tear at struggling prey. If modern anglerfish creep you out at six inches long, imagine their hunting strategy scaled up to the size of a crocodile. Not feeling so confident in those shallow wades anymore, are you? But the Lacanyathus wasn't the only creature turning the seafloor into a horror show. Just when you thought it couldn't get worse than fish disguised as the ground, the Devonian threw something even more terrifying into the mix. Sea scorpions. If the thought of encountering a scorpion in your shoe sends shivers down your spine, the Devonian has some particularly bad news for you. Meet Jekyllopterus, the sea scorpion that makes modern arachnids look like friendly pets. Reaching lengths exceeding 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet, this massive arthropod dominated coastal lagoons and estuaries as an apex predator. Its estimated mass rivaled that of an adult reindeer. Let that sink in for a moment. A scorpion-like creature the weight of a reindeer, patrolling ancient shores with predatory intent. Unlike modern scorpions that deliver venom through a stinger, Jekyllopterus opted for a different approach to killing. Its most distinctive features were massive pincers measuring up to one meter or three feet in length. These weren't simple grasping tools. They were sophisticated killing instruments equipped with serrated edges and irregular protrusions that functioned like biological serrated knives. The efficiency of these weapons isn't just theoretical. Paleontologists have discovered preserved prey specimens bearing distinctive puncture wounds that match Jekyllopterus pincer morphology perfectly. One of the rare instances where we can directly connect predator to prey in the fossil record. These wounds tell a grim story of precision attacks, with victims seized and systematically dismembered. What's particularly fascinating, or terrifying, depending on your perspective, is that despite their scorpion-like appearance, Eurypterids like Jacolopteris were actually more closely related to modern horseshoe crabs. This means the scorpion body plan, with segmented bodies and powerful appendages, proved so effective for predation that nature developed it multiple times independently. And just when you thought the seafloor couldn't get any more dangerous, remember that these sea scorpions shared their habitat with the ambush hunting Lacanathus. Nowhere was safe, not below, not above. But perhaps you're thinking that the solution is simple. Just avoid the bottom and swim in open water instead. If only the Devonian horrors were so easily avoided. Swimming in the open water of Devonian seas would be like entering a three-dimensional hunting ground where predators could approach from any direction. At speeds that would make modern pursuit, predators seem sluggish by comparison. Among the most efficient hunters of these ancient open waters was Holoptychius, a predator that combined the worst of both worlds, size and speed. Stretching up to four meters or 13 feet in length, 
This streamlined killer possessed a unique combination of traits that made escape nearly impossible. Unlike its larger, more heavily armored contemporaries, Hall of Tychius sacrificed protection for performance. Its specialized scales provided both flexibility and streamlined hydrodynamics, while powerful fins allowed for rapid direction changes that would leave modern fish struggling to keep pace. Fossil specimens from Scotland and Russia reveal multiple rows of sharp, recurved teeth, not just designed to catch prey, but to ensure it couldn't escape once caught. And while most Devonian predators stuck to specific hunting zones, Holoptychius ruled both open waters and the seafloor, leaving virtually nowhere for prey to hide. Its versatility was like combining the speed of a tuna with the adaptability of a barracuda, then scaling it up to the size of a small boat. But Holoptychius wasn't alone in the open waters. Swimming alongside it were the Onychodontiforms, an order of primitive fish that achieved global distribution during the Devonian. While they might not have been the largest predators, they possessed what might be the most disturbing adaptation of all, a revolutionary skull structure with similarities to adaptations that would later appear in snakes hundreds of millions of years later. The true innovation of onychodontiforms lay in their cranial architecture. Their skulls featured a kinetic design composed of loosely articulated bones, some completely disconnected from each other. This adaptation created a highly flexible jaw system that solved a fundamental problem in predation how to strike quickly without risking structural damage to the skull. Among these ancient predators, Onychodus stands out as particularly nightmarish, reigning as the largest bony fish of the Middle Devonian period. This cosmopolitan hunter reached impressive dimensions of 4 meters or 12 feet, with masses exceeding 160 kilograms or 350 pounds, comparable to the weight of a female lion. But it wasn't just its size that made Onychodus terrifying. Paleontological evidence suggests a sophisticated hunting strategy. Using its muscular pectoral fins to walk across reef substrates or drift silently below potential prey before unleashing explosive acceleration powered by its robust caudal fin. This hunting technique has been confirmed through fossilized prey specimens, including one remarkable find containing a partially digested placoderm measuring nearly half the predator's length suggesting these fish could expand their jaw structure to swallow extraordinarily large prey whole, similar to modern-day gulper eels, but at a much larger scale. The creature's most distinctive feature was its highly specialized dentition, an anatomical innovation unseen in modern fish. Beyond rows of needle-like teeth lining its mouth cavity, Onychodus possessed unique, retractable tusk-like teeth arranged in whorls at the front of its jaws. This adaptation allowed for a dynamic hunting strategy where these enlarged teeth could be manipulated independently, effectively creating a mobile trap of piercing weapons. And yet, despite the horrors of the seafloor and open water predators we've discussed, we still haven't reached the most terrifying creature of the Devonian seas. For that, we need to meet the armored titan that ruled them all. If nature ever set out to design the perfect aquatic killing machine, Dunkleosteus would be the terrifying result. This marine apex predator didn't just participate in the Devonian ecosystem, it dominated it completely, with fossil evidence spanning three continents, North America, Europe, and Africa. Its ubiquitous presence made it virtually inescapable in Devonian seas. While modern great white sharks are formidable predators, Dunkleosteus represented an entirely different class of threat. Imagine a creature combining the aggressive hunting style of a great white with the armored resilience of a military tank. Its most distinctive feature was a sophisticated helmet of dermal bone plates that protected its skull and anterior trunk, creating an impenetrable living battering ram. This armor wasn't just for defense, it served as an anchor point for incredibly powerful jaw muscles, a biological innovation that allowed it to dominate ancient marine ecosystems with terrifying efficiency. The true dimensions of Dunkleosteus remain a subject of scientific debate primarily because its fossilization pattern favored the preservation of its armored head while leaving few traces of its softer body tissues. Current size estimates range from 4.1 to 10 meters or 13 to 33 feet, with the most widely accepted maximum length being around 5 meters or 16 feet, comparable to a large great white shark. However, Dunkleosteus's unique body architecture meant that even smaller specimens could exceed two metric tons in mass, surpassing the heaviest documented great whites. The fragmentary nature of the fossil record leaves open the intriguing possibility that even larger specimens await discovery, particularly in unexplored Devonian deposits. And as if its size wasn't terrifying enough, Dunkleosteus didn't rely on conventional teeth. 
Instead, it possessed specialized, sharp, recurved teeth that acted like biological hooks, designed not just to catch prey, but to ensure it couldn't escape once caught. These plates could generate an astonishing 80,000 pounds per square inch of pressure at their tips, exceeding not only any known fish, living or extinct, but even surpassing the force of a 50 caliber bullet impact. Recent biomechanical studies suggest this bite force was enhanced by the shape and composition of the bone plates, which concentrated enormous pressure at their cutting edges. Its jaw mechanism, utilizing a four-bar linkage system similar to modern industrial pump jacks, serves as a striking example of how nature outpaced human engineering by hundreds of millions of years. This mechanism allowed Dunkleosteus to open its jaws in just 20 to 60 milliseconds, twice the speed of a human blink. The rapid jaw movement created a powerful vacuum effect, essentially turning the creature's mouth into a biological pump that could draw in prey before they could react. This combination of speed and suction made its hunting strategy nearly impossible to evade, as prey would be pulled into striking range before they could process the danger. The devastating effectiveness of this predatory arsenal isn't just theoretical. Paleontologists have discovered compelling evidence in fossil specimens of both Titanicthys and other Dunkleosteus individuals bearing characteristic damage patterns from Dunkleosteus attacks. These fossils reveal that this creature's predatory reach extended to even the largest animals of its time, including members of its own species, making it perhaps the first documented example of cannibalism in the fossil record of large marine predators. And if one Dunkleosteus wasn't terrifying enough, remember that it represented just one star in a constellation of similar predators. The Dunkleosteoid family included over 10 distinct genera, and these apex predators weren't just limited to a single region, they spanned across the globe, Many of them were perfectly sized for dismembering medium-sized prey, which means escaping to different parts of the world wouldn't set you free from them. You'd only encounter different variations of these brutal hunters, each one just as deadly as the last. Among these, Eastmanosteus and Westerlichthus, discovered in Australian deposits, were particularly noteworthy, both reaching sizes comparable to modern bull sharks. Their fossil distribution reveals a remarkable success story. The dunks achieved what few prehistoric animal groups managed, a truly global distribution throughout the entire Devonian period. This meant that virtually every marine ecosystem hosted at least one species of these armored predators, creating an unbroken chain of apex hunters across the ancient seas. In this ocean of horrors, not every massive creature was a predator, but that doesn't mean they weren't terrifying in their own right. Imagine swimming in open water and suddenly encountering a living wall of scales and armor larger than a city bus. Heterosteus, potentially surpassing Dunkleosteus in length, developed a dramatically different lifestyle. Fossils discovered across European and Greenlandic deposits paint a picture of a unique giant that, despite its family ties to Dunkleosteus, likely adapted as a filter feeder. The largest known species, Heterosteus asmusi, reached an estimated length of six meters or 20 feet, rivaling the size of a modern orca. While most evidence points to a filter-feeding lifestyle, some paleontologists propose an intriguing alternative hypothesis. Heterosteus might have been an ambush predator, using its flattened body profile to conceal itself against the seafloor, similar to the hunting strategy employed by modern Pacific stargazers. This theory is supported by certain anatomical features preserved in fossils, including specialized jaw structures that could have been useful for both filter-feeding and active predation. Whether peaceful plankton eater or cunning predator, encountering this massive armored fish would have been a terrifying experience, as its sheer size and unusual appearance would have made it a formidable presence in Devonian seas. Imagine the shock of encountering what appears to be a moving island of armor plates, blocking out the light from above as it passes overhead. Another massive Devonian creature, Titanicthus, developed a filter-feeding lifestyle independently. Despite its closer physical resemblance to Dunkleosteus, this behemoth belonged to a different placoderm superfamily, the Denishthyloidea. At an estimated length of 7.6 meters or 25 feet, Titanicthus likely held the title of Earth's largest fish during the Devonian period, surpassing even modern whale sharks in terms of body mass relative to skeletal structure. The creature's intimidating appearance was enhanced by its distinctive shark-like fins, a testament to how certain body shapes have proven effective across different lineages. While Titanicthys was the peaceful giant of its family, its smaller relatives proved far more aggressive. 
Members like Bungardius and Dinicthys adapted to fill similar predatory niches as the Dunkleostoids, developing sharp dental plates and powerful jaw mechanics. These 3-meter or 10-foot predators were particularly notable for their specialized adaptations. Bungardius, for instance, possessed a unique rostral projection that effectively functioned as a biological spear, adding another weapon to its predatory arsenal. The combination of these arthrodiron hunters alongside the Dunkleostoids created a multi-layered ecosystem of predators that would have made Devonian waters particularly hazardous. You couldn't even trust the seemingly peaceful filter feeders, while Titanicthus might not have been interested in you as prey. A simple accidental collision with this 25-foot armored giant could prove just as fatal as the jaws of a dedicated predator. By now, it would be reasonable for you to wonder if there was any safety to be found in the Devonian world. Perhaps the freshwater environments, rivers, lakes, and streams might offer sanctuary from the marine horrors we've explored. Unfortunately, the Devonian period marked a crucial milestone. The transformation of freshwater environments into complex ecosystems harboring sophisticated predators of their own. Leading this freshwater revolution were the Tristocopterids, a diverse group that colonized virtually every significant freshwater body. Their success stemmed from a suite of advanced adaptations, robust fin skeletal structures, muscular pectoral fins, hydrodynamic body shapes, and disproportionately large dentition. Within this group, Hyneria emerged as the apex predator, reaching dimensions comparable to the largest recorded bull sharks. However, its hunting adaptations went far beyond mere size. Unlike shark dentition, Hyneria possessed massive conical teeth measuring five centimeters or two inches, twice the length of bull shark teeth, arranged in a formation that created an inescapable grip, particularly effective in turbid waters. Fossil evidence from their preferred habitats, characterized by dense debris and submerged vegetation, suggests these predators were specially adapted for hunting in low visibility conditions. This interpretation is supported by the discovery of extensive sensory canal networks preserved in their skull fossils, indicating sophisticated pressure detection systems similar to, but more extensive than, the lateral lines of modern fish. Perhaps most terrifying, the hunting capabilities of Tristocopterids may have extended beyond aquatic environments. Biomechanical analysis of their fin structure suggests these creatures possessed sufficient muscular power to launch themselves from water onto shorelines a behavior observed in modern organisms like leopard seals, though at a smaller scale. This adaptation would have effectively eliminated the shoreline as a safety zone for prey species. Among the most revolutionary Devonian organisms were the Elpistostegalia, a group that literally embodied the water-to-land transition. The most famous member, Tiktolek, exemplified this breakthrough, possessing an unprecedented combination of aquatic and terrestrial adaptations. While retaining ancestral features like gills and scales, it developed crucial innovations including weight-bearing wrists, a mobile neck, functional lungs, and robust rib bones. Contrary to popular depictions as small, transitional creatures, Tiktaalik was a massive animal, reaching lengths of 3 meters or 9 feet. Its size, combined with a crocodilian-like skull structure and double rows of sharp teeth, suggests it was an apex predator in its shallow water habitat. Fossil evidence indicates it could walk underwater using its specialized fins and likely navigated through mudflats in a manner similar to modern mudskippers, though at a much larger scale. The success of this body plan is further evidenced by relatives like Pendericthus. Its particularly robust skull structure, characterized by extensive bone reinforcement and compact design, suggests it could generate and withstand greater bite forces than Tiktaalik. The horror implications of these creatures are profound. Predators that could pursue prey across the water-land boundary represented an unprecedented threat. The safety of solid ground, a refuge that had previously been secure from aquatic threats, was now compromised by creatures that could navigate both worlds. The Devonian's dramatic parade of marine horrors was ultimately curtailed by one of Earth's major extinction events, the Late Devonian Extinction. Beginning approximately 372 million years ago, this wasn't a single catastrophic event but rather a series of extinction pulses spanning several million years. The marine realm bore the brunt of this crisis, with approximately 50% of genera vanishing from the fossil record. Among the casualties were the entire lineages of Dunkleostoids, Anacodontiforms, and Tristocopterids, essentially wiping out the main cast of characters that had made Devonian seas so formidable. But just as the world's oceans lost their terrifying inhabitants, the stage was set for a new era, the Carboniferous. Here, the battle for survival continued, 
but on land and in the skies with some of the most bizarre and formidable creatures to ever walk the earth. Curious to know what came next? Check out our next video. This is Roaring Echo. Thank you for watching.